All right, so this has been one heck of a long chapter here. We got one more aspect of hydrocarbons to go over, and that is this very special class known as aromatic compounds. Um, you know, the benzene is sort of the most famous aromatic compound. That is this compound here. Again, it's called benzene. It's a six-membered ring where every other carbon um, is double bonded together. So another way that you guys have probably seen this is like this. This is benzene. This is this very famous molecule. Um, it has very unique properties in that it is super duper stable. It's way more stable than other hydrocarbons. And that really perplexed scientists for a long time. Uh, it turns out that the reason is that these double bonds can actually jump positions. They can move around in this sort of a ring. So uh, it's actually not really correct to just say like this structure here is benzene. You have to include both of these and notice that the difference between them is that the double bonds have all, whoops. Have jumped around uh, between these two. Okay, so both of these together, they're called resonance structures. We're actually not going to go too, too deep into this concept of resonance in this course. Uh, but nonetheless, that's why you actually also usually see benzene represented with a circle in there to represent the fact that those double bonds are actually kind of moving around in a circle. Um, we're only going to scratch on this topic a little bit, so I don't want to fall too far into it. But the bottom line is, is that the fact that these bonds can move, what is called a resonance of those double bonds, is this super duper stabilizing force. Okay, so benzene happens to be just way more stable than scientists would have thought without considering that resonance. Um, and again, you'll see it with this sort of circle in the middle there to represent the fact that those double bonds can move in the circle. Okay, uh, why are benzene rings such a big deal? They form the basis of a lot of organic compounds, including a lot of drugs. So aspirin is, of course, aspirin, what you get for headaches. Acetaminophen, that's the main um, ingredient in Tylenol, right? So that's another drug. Uh, vinylin is a compound that's a flavoring compound in vanilla. So these benzene rings, right? So each one of them contains a benzene ring. And so they're just kind of all over the place in organic chemistry and biochemistry. What we're really gonna worry about, the thing that I want you guys to know from this is how to name very simple benzenes or benzene derivatives, okay? And we do it a lot like we name cyclohexanes, okay? And that is, we're gonna say that this benzene ring here is the parent chain. And so what we're going to say is that whatever this, these substituents in are on the, the parent chain is benzene. And then we're going to go and what are our substituents? What do we call it when chlorine's a substituent? So this would be chlorobenzene. And notice just like when it was a cyclohexane and there was only one, we don't bother numbering the position of that one. When we have two chlorine substituents or two substituents at any points, then all of a sudden we start numbering. But again, our parent chain is going to be that benzene ring. So this would be one, two dichlorobenzene. Uh, they also call it O dichlorobenzene, but I don't want you guys to worry too much about that because we're not talking about orthometapara stuff. Um, but O just means they're right next to each other. It's another way of saying one, two. Uh, you know, or 1,3-dichlorobenzene, that gets an M, or 1,4-dichlorobenzene, that gets a P. Again, I'm going to make an executive decision and say that we're not going to worry about this in our class, as long as you have, know how to name them using the IUPAC naming scheme. Okay, and the same thing goes for uh, when there's methyl groups instead of chloro groups. Really, any of those groups that we talked about before, we could stick onto a benzene and we would know how to name it, right? So this would be 1,2-dimethylbenzene, 1,3-dimethylbenzene, 1,4-dimethylbenzene. Um, they have this common name, xylene, 
when it's two methyl groups on the benzene. Again, I'm, we're not gonna worry about that. I'm, I'm much less focused on having you guys know every common name that's out there and more focused on having you be able to build the IUPAC names. All right, so for this, again, really it's just the nomenclature that I want you to have. So for this particular compound, could you get from this multiple choice what the names of these two compounds should be? All right, so it's definitely not, let's go order of, uh, what am I thinking? Process of elimination. So it's not gonna be a cyclohexane because our benzene's the, um, the parent chain. So then what's the big difference here is chlorobenzene versus one chlorobenzene. Since it's the only thing on the ring, we don't have to specify its position. So chlorobenzene would be correct. And then for the dimethylbenzenes, remember we just have to number. Let's actually do this. So I could go counterclockwise, one, two, three, four, five, six, or clockwise, one, two, three, four, five, six. Which one of these numbering schemes is gonna be correct, red or blue? Remember, it's all about keeping your numbers as low as possible. So in this case, I want to choose the blue numbering scheme, which would mean that one, three dimethylbenzene is correct. Okay, so basically, in this nomenclature scheme of benzene, you're going to treat it exactly like cyclohexane, uh, cyclohexane, but instead of having the parent chain be cyclohexane, it's going to be benzene.